My name is Bill Koish. I'm a, a theoretical physicist from McGill University in Montreal, Canada. Uh, I study the quantum properties of materials uh, and uh, how to use those materials for advanced technologies like quantum computing uh, and more generally something called quantum information processing. I knew about this research group uh, from a long time ago. Uh, so this has been a world leading group for the last uh, 10 or 15 years. So I was excited to, to learn about the new ideas that they were working on. Uh, I had worked on some ideas related to quantum technologies uh, connected to using states of individual electrons for quantum computing. Uh, and here in this group, they're working on, uh, or they started working on much more complex systems uh, but systems that, although they involved many more electrons, a huge number of electrons instead of just one, uh, they could uh, store information potentially for much longer periods of time in a much more robust way. Uh, so these are so-called topological systems. Um, and I got excited about learning this uh, new area uh, and I wanted to come and, and hear, from it, hear about it from, from the experts basically. Uh, to try to combine what I knew about quantum information science uh, with what they knew about these topological systems. So I'm working on a number of projects. Uh, so I have several students working on different projects. Some of those projects are connected to the things that I was working on before I came to Denmark. But I'm also trying to diversify uh, working together with the theory groups here uh, and the experimental group. Um, so roughly speaking, the, the project is to take uh, knowledge that, that I had in the past about single electrons uh, and transfer it to these much more complex many electron systems which may nevertheless show simple behavior when they're cooled down to very low temperature uh, and when they're prepared in the right experimental situation. So for that you need a really top-level world-leading uh, experimental lab and you need top-level world-leading uh, theoretical physicists who understand these systems uh, and uh, I'm lucky enough that uh, uh, here in the University of Copenhagen, uh, Copenhagen University, there are both. So, so there are both world-leading theorists and world-leading experimentalists in this area uh, and I'm able to, to combine my understanding with theirs. Bill is a guy who's particularly He's a theoretical physicist, and he's particularly good at being very close to experiment, of understanding experiment well enough to um, even be able to make suggestions about what, what we do next in the lab, uh, but also you know, is a specialist in the experimental, uh, in the theoretical tools that he can use to uh, analyze uh, the data that we produce. So there's a, there are some theoretical physicists like Bill who are capable of doing that, but not very many. And uh, I've worked with him for many years, and um, uh, it was just the right time for having a theoretical physicist look over our shoulders in the lab and make valuable suggestions for not only what we should do next, but how to understand what it is that we've measured already. The field is too broad and too difficult for um, someone to specialize in all aspects of the work. And so there are specialists. There are sophisticated scientific tools across the hall in the laboratory, and only certain people know how to use those tools. Bill, for instance, doesn't. I do. Now, on the other hand, Bill has analytical techniques that I don't know, but he does, that his students know and my students don't. So it's really something in which two groups of people or two individuals who bring different skills to the problem can add up to something uh, that's more than, um, you know, that either one can bring to the problem.